Hey there guys, this is Victor with Victor Vector JKU. Today, we're gonna to be going over my process for building a harness specifically for my new rock lights, my KC Cyclones. Let's get into it. All right guys, so in my last video, I gave you an overview of the lighting package that I chose to select for Project Vector, which included forward lighting, perimeter lighting, and rock lighting. Today, what I'm gonna be doing is giving you a little bit more detail on how I went about building the harness for my rock lights and the reason for building my own versus buying one that KC Highlights offers. Let's go ahead and get on the table and I'll go ahead and walk you guys through the process. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how I'm gonna go about building the harness for my KC Cyclones. So before we jump into that, we'll go ahead and talk about the supplied wiring that they come with. So they come with the two leads coming off of the light itself and they have these connectors and these are great if you're going to be running through tube or body panels or something if you want to keep this tucked away somewhere where it's going to be running inside of something so you don't have to drill a really large hole and they're pretty good connectors they work just fine um, but it's not my preference for what I like to use myself. What I like to use are these Deutsch connectors and I probably mispronounced that but I really like these guys because they have these grommets in the back where you feed the wire through which creates a watertight seal and then where the connection is there's another rubber grommet here so when you go ahead and connect these guys again you're creating another watertight seal they're also completely rebuildable i've used these a few times before really like them super easy and if you get the right tools to use with them it makes it a super slick job and now you also might be curious why am i building my own harness versus just buying one that can come with a rock light kit so the reason for this is because I want to put my rock lights in very specific locations and I don't want to have either a lot of extra wire or be limited based on the harness that's supplied. So this way I get to route the wire exactly where I want it to be. It's going to land all my lights exactly where I want them to be placed and I think it's the best solution for me. Now it's definitely available to go out there and purchase a pre-made harness for a rock light kit, eight pillar lights or whatever lighting that you're looking to do. But this is the way that I prefer to do it. So before I get into how I'm actually going to build this harness, I want to talk about one thing that's important to do before you start. And that's going to be figuring out your routing path on your vehicle. So determine where you want it to route from and to, how it's going to be routed and attached. Because you don't want to go through and make a harness and end up, oh, it's too long or too short. More importantly, too short, because then you got to cut and splice an extra wire. And if it's too long, you just gotta bundle up a whole bunch extra. And I try to keep mine fairly minimal uh, that I don't have a lot of extra wiring bounded up. And when it comes to wiring in the light, there's two ways you can do this. You can either wire it in series or in parallel. My choice and preference is parallel. Most light manufacturers, any supplied harnesses they give you will also be in parallel. And I'm gonna cover just a couple of the tools that I'm using throughout this process. So I obviously have my wire cutters. I have a wire stripper and I really like this tool so it's pretty convenient it will strip any wire thickness up to a certain amount I'm not sure exactly what this tool is rated to but basically you don't have to try to use the old style where you have to sort of select what your gauge wire is you crimp it and then you pull the wire makes it a little bit easier then I have my standard tool here so I can use this guy to crimp down on my butt connectors that I'm using then I have the specific tool that's used for the Deutsch style connectors. Now, it depends on what type of connector you get to run the tool. So you need to make sure you get the compatible tool and connector. I'll go ahead and leave links to these tools along with the connectors in the video description below. I have a heat gun and then I have my heat shrink tubing and I like to use these heat shrink tubes with the solder built into it. So when you heat shrink this on, it will solder your wires and create a watertight seal. So these things are pretty cool. And then, like I said, I have my Deutsch style connectors and that's pretty much everything that I'm working with here today. All right. So, um, basically to kick it off then with how I go about making up my harness. So I've gone through and I figured out all the measurements that I need for making up my harness. And I'm just going to show you one section of how I go about splicing it all together. Now for my wire of choice, since this is all LEDs, low current draw, what I'm using is 16 gauge wire and I'm using both a red and a black. All right guys, so with the harness laid out, what we're gonna go ahead and do is start off by stripping the shielding off of one set of the wires. Here I'm starting with the ground wire. 
And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start slipping the heat shrink tubing on, starting with the pair of wires and then each wire individually. And then on the opposite side, the pair of wires again. And then I'll go ahead and install my heat shrink butt connectors. And I'll bring the three ground wires together. So the two coming in one direction and one from the other. Twist them together and then slide the heat shrink butt connector over, making sure that the solder point is over the exposed wires. And then we'll go ahead and begin shrinking this on with our heat gun. I like to start with the ends, making sure that there's a good connection or a good seal around the wires, and then I will work on the solder. And you can see here that I'm doing little pulls with the wires, and I found that that helps make the solder flow well into the wire. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring in our heat shrink tube over top, and I like to do this just to give a little extra protection to those heat shrink butt connectors. Here you can see the finished result of the ground wires. Next, we'll move on to the power feed. So again, stripping the shielding back off of these three leads. And I'm just straightening out my wires here to make sure everything is straight and I don't have a whole bunch of twists or anything and to ensure that all my lengths are close to the same. Then again, we'll go ahead and twist the two coming in one direction and then bring the third in and we'll then slide our heat shrink butt connector on. And again, starting with the sides of the heat shrink connector, sealing to the wire. And then soldering the exposed wires together. And we'll bring our heat shrink tube over the top again, shrink that into place with the heat gun. And then to wrap up, I'll go ahead and bring the heat shrink tube from the pair up to where I have the butt connectors. And I will go ahead and shrink that on as well. All right, and then with that, that wraps up this section of the harness. Nice and clean and complete and ready to move on to the next section. So then one last thing that I like to do is every certain amount of length on the harness, I'll add in another little section of heat shrink tubing and that will just keep it so it stays kind of together and it doesn't have the ability for it to separate and get kind of coiled up like this. It'll stay a little bit more neat and I typically go somewhere around eight inches of spacing between these. Not completely necessary, you don't have to do this. I will be using some of this convolute tubing to protect the harness from any abrasion that it could see on the chassis, but this is just to sort of help out and keep it clean. That's basically gonna wrap up this one section of the harness. So basically what I have is what's coming from the bow switch, so I'm gonna have my positive and then my ground that's right near it to the light that's going to be mounted center of the vehicle outside the frame rail and then this will lead further back to the next junction point. So that's going to cover that one section. I'm not going to go through and show the rest of how I splice in the rest of my harness because all I'll do is repeat the exact same steps creating the next junctions of running this in parallel. So with this guy wrapped up I want to show you guys really quick how I go about putting the connector onto one of the KC Highlight Cyclones. So basically it's pretty simple. I'm going to get the waterproof connecting pieces out of the way and I'm just going to go ahead and cut these wires. I'm going to take whatever the shortest one is. I'm going to cut it as close to the connector that they have and remove that. And I will straighten out the wires, figure out about the length and I will go ahead and cut this guy to an equal length on the ground wire. Then next what I need to do is I need to strip back the appropriate amount of shielding off the wire. And then, so these guys, I am using the female connector, which uses the male terminals. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab two of my male terminals. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put that over the wire. And actually right now I'm remembering. So when I did these before, I actually had to double the wire back on itself because these connectors are for larger gauge wire than what these are. So I need to couple, cut double the length back of shielding. That way I can wrap the wire back on itself. And then that way, when I put my terminal, it will crimp properly. Now what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna insert the terminal into the tool and give it a crimp. We'll do just a, a light tug test, make sure it's seated properly, crimp properly. We'll move on to the next one. So that's pretty straightforward. That's all you have to do to get the terminals crimped on. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab our female Deutsch connector. And I just need to make sure that I install this the proper way. So everything that I've been running has the positive wire to the right hand side and the ground to the left. So I just need to make sure that they slide in appropriately. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it right on in until it clicks. And do the same thing with the ground wire. Push it in until it gets the click. And then the last piece to finish up this assembly is gonna be taking the little green tab and that needs to drop in there and that's going to lock the little clips in the back with the terminals in place. So this is where I use either my needle nose pliers or the screwdriver to help get this guy into place. And just like that, it's all wrapped up. So that takes care of basically the assembly of the female side of the Deutsch connector. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the male side. So again, what I'm doing here is basically setting up one like this where it's a pigtail, ready to be crimped on to the rest of my harness. So what we'll do is we'll again start with crimping, uh, cutting off the shielding. And in this case, I have the correct size wire for the Deutsch connector, so I don't need to cut excess off. So this time we're gonna be using the female terminals on these wires. And the process is going to be the exact same. We're just going to insert it into the tool, give it a crimp, a little tug test, make sure it's good. Repeat with the other wire. All right. Now with that, we're going to go ahead and grab our male side connector. And we want to make sure that we install these on the correct sides as well. And basically for this is you want to make sure that your positive and your positive are connected and your negative and negative. So we're going to be putting the positive on the left hand side this time. Slide him in through the grommet on the back side until you get the click and we'll do the negative on the right side. All right. And then with that, what we'll do is we'll grab our flathead, make sure that the clips on the inside are down and depressed and then we'll install our lock in please piece. And there we go. And that is basically the process for making up your male side connector. Again, super easy, super fast. And if you ever need to replace these, all you have to do is pop off the plastic or pull out the green piece. And you're going to lift on the two clips on the inside. And then you can just pull these wires straight out the back. But as long as this is all assembled, these wires won't be coming out. All right. And then the last thing that I like to do, as you can see with the rest of my pigtails, is I like to run some heat shrink tube over it. And this length that I have here is just right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install this over this pigtail. And now when I do this, first you saw what I did there was I will actually pinch this in the opposite direction. It kind of opens up the heat shrink tube, allows it to slip on easier. And I just want it to be about that length. So I have a good about inch, inch and a half left on this end. So I can strip the shielding, add on a butt connector, and make sure that it's all well protected. And so now last thing I gotta do, shrink the heat shrink on. All right, so the last thing that I'm gonna show you guys for how I make up my harness is installing the ground terminal. Now, I won't be able to do the power terminal yet because that has to be installed once the harness is routed through the bow switch because the waterproof pass through in the unit is too small for the fork terminal to fit through. So I'll have to do that once I have this routed into the bow switch box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take my ground wire. I'm going to go ahead and strip off the wire back and I'm going to start off with installing some heat shrink tube 
onto this because this is one of those cases that if you go to install the heat shrink afterwards, you won't be able to get it over the round head of the terminal. So it's important to do this before. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and bring on the ring terminal that I'm using for my ground. Put that into place, grab my crimping tool, and crimp them on. All right, so it's all crimped on. Only thing left to do is I'll just put my heat shrink tube on and shrink that into place. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up today's video on how I went about building the harness for my KC Cyclones that are gonna be utilized for my rock lights on Project Vector. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and got some good value out of it. And if you guys did, please like the video and drop any questions, comments, or other feedback in the comments below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and share this video to help my channel grow. Otherwise guys, we are Victor Vector JKU. We're taking on this build and the trails, both direction and magnitude. All right guys, have a good one. We'll catch you next time.